It's Monday night at the Exit Inn, and the band Blue Monday is about halfway through its first set. And I love that highway scenery. But each time my needles are hitting E. That's Dave Pomeroy playing bass and singing. He's been in town 10 years. He sold encyclopedias at first until Sleepy LaBeef hired him to play on the road. Well, the first time I came to town, I was only here about three weeks, and I was. Uh... I was uh, hurting for money and all that stuff, so I ended up getting a road gig with a guy named Sleepy LaBeef, who was a rockabilly guy. More recently, he spent six and a half years with Don Williams' road band. That job ended last October when Williams announced he was giving up touring. It just kind of keeps building up and building up. And like it or not, that gave Dave both the time and the need to try something he'd been wanting to do, breaking into session recording. Most musicians, like Dave, get their first taste of session work in demo studios, like this one. They're smaller, and the equipment's not as fancy as you'd find in the big-name studios. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think we fix the end. Yeah, I think we fix the end. That felt great. That felt fixable. These studios don't have to be as elaborate because demo recordings are not meant for commercial distribution. Songwriters and singers use demo tapes to display their work hoping an interested producer would use it in a master session. Even demo work doesn't come easy, especially for a player like Dave, who was known for his road work. If you're thought of as being a road player, people assume you're on the road, and, they, and they're going to call people who are in town for sessions. I wanted to hang a banner up across 16th over there, you know, saying, Steve Turner is off the road, you know. Steve Turner had the same problem. For eight years, Steve played drums with Glenn Campbell's road band. During that period, he did some session work in Los Angeles, but when he came to Nashville, he had to break in with a new set of producers. A producer hunting songs for an artist will listen to a lot of tapes, like the one Dave and Steve are recording, before making a decision. Producer Larry Butler says he's heard some fine playing on demo tapes, but not fine enough to abandon the musicians he normally uses. So that's the reason that it is so hard to break in, because when you find a guy that sits here and plays piano for you, and a, and a guitar player, and a drummer, and when they get through, you sell five million records on that cut, the next time you set up a session, what are you going to do? You going to call somebody else? So working on demos doesn't immediately pay off with offers from the producers who listen to them. The process is gradual and consists primarily of getting known known by fellow musicians who might drop your name to a producer in need, and known to the producers themselves, people who eliminate as many unknown quantities as possible before they start a session. You know, people will put together demo tapes and send them around, but it gets to the, what we were talking about of the personal thing, not, you know, even somebody might play great and you don't know how they would, whether they get in the fight with a piano player on a session or something, you know. Dave and Steve have found who they know makes the difference. Their contacts are the keys they need to open doors in a town known for following tradition. Everything you do leads to something else. Suspended in time. Dave and Steve first met when Chip Hardy hired them to play a demo session for MCA Records. Hardy runs MCA's artist development program. MCA uses demo sessions to prepare new artists for operating in a recording environment. The company also takes advantage of the demo time to get a close look at promising musicians without risking a major production. We want new bands. We want to, want to be able to put together new combinations uh, of, of players, fresh players like Dave and Steve. A good driver's like a thoroughbred. You gotta keep him clean, you gotta keep him fed. Hardy says he's had his eye on Dave Pomeroy for the last few years, and he'd seen enough of Dave's live performing that he thought the time had come to try him in the studio. I really did like what he did on the uh, artist development demo session. The praise from an MCA producer makes all the nights on the road worthwhile. But Dave doesn't plan to stop performing live anytime soon. Never can tell when another producer might show up to listen to some music. 